All right, folks, welcome back. Uh, my boy McCoy's going out there to get us a 2014 Chevrolet uh, or a GMC. It's a Yukon. It looks like it's the XL. It's a big, long one, like the Suburban. Uh, apparently, it won't communicate with the New York State inspection machine. Uh, so the guy said there's something wrong, or the shop he had it said there's something wrong with the data link connector uh, where it won't communicate. They don't know what's going on with it. So we're going to check that out. Hopefully, it's not as silly as just a blown fuse and they didn't look, but we're going to find out what's going on. We're gonna grab the OTC can test box. So it's just a uh, OBD2 breakout box. This is gonna quickly tell us if we have power and ground and uh, go from there. I've seen these as simple as just a worn out, you know, data link connector. Uh, it can be as simple as that. Sometimes we have problems with our inspection machine, you know, plugging it in, you know, you gotta hold up on it. But uh, I assume that whatever shop you had it at fiddled with that, but I could be wrong. All right, so let's have a look. Gonna turn the key on if you don't listen to the dinger. Was the dash lit up like a Christmas tree when you brought it in, McCoy? No, just the uh, trash. Okay, data link is hanging down. Oops, it's not all green and pussy. So that's good. We plug it in, and we got nothing. No power. Well, we have to have power on ground to make this thing work. So we're gonna check right here. We're gonna see if we got power on pin 16. We're gonna see if we have grounds on four and five. I assume we're just missing power. It's gonna be hilarious if it is just a bad fuse. Power probe. We have no power there. Ground, ground. Next step, uh, should be the obvious one. We're gonna check on service data, see where the fuse is for the data link connector for pin 16, and then see if the fuse is open. McCoy looked it up for us. Underhood fuse box, hot at all times, just like my wife. Uh, LTR fuse number 53, it's a 20 amp. Uh, the legend's on the back side of that. Uh, so you got gas and diesel, so find fuse 23. Right, McCoy said it's this one right here, fuse number 53, 20 amp. Power, power, oh boy. So we have power on both sides. Uh, get a pair of needle nose and take and pull that out, McCoy. We wanna make sure that we don't have the classic missing leg of the fuse, which is a fun trick to play on people that you work with. Uh, leave the power side of the fuse, cut off the load side, stick it back in and send them on a wild goose chase. So he's gonna yank that out. It's got both legs, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's got both legs, fuse boxes and all crusty. So he's gonna put that back in and we're gonna go to step two. Our next step was to pull up an OEM diagram to see if on this Fuse 53, if there's a connector anywhere on these wires that we can split the system in half. And according to the OEM diagram, there is not. Uh, that power feeds uh, here out of connector X4, uh, pin J5, comes out red and white, goes to the cigar lighter, accessory power outlet, depending on which RPO code it has, and then it goes to the data link connector. So one, one thing that would be interesting to see is does the cigar lighter or the power outlet, depending on what RPO this has, does that have power? Uh, because that's gonna tell us something. Um, it looks, if this is correct, they are spliced together in the same pin on the bottom of the fuse box. So I guess that would be my next step, just to gather data, find the cigar lighter or power outlet and see if that uh, has power. I don't know which one is accessory power outlet one. That one has power. I assume this one does, because he's got it plugged into something. But these may not even be the correct accessory powers. So they both have power. I know there's some in the center console, but it's loaded right full of junk. Uh, so we're not gonna get too sidetracked with that, but I'm gonna take just visual inspection under the dash just to make sure it's not a broken wire first. So I looked under the dash. Uh, the best I can see the wires, nothing looks obvious. It still has the factory tape around it. And just so we don't get burned by a bad crimp on the end of the data link connector, I did check it from the backside on the wire with the OBD2 breakout box unplugged. Some of you might have made the observation when I checked it initially, you know, when I plugged it in, there was a reading on our power probe, you know, 0 0.1 volts or something like that. And that's because we have the breakout box plugged in. We're making a connection to ground through that. So I unplugged it, checked it with the power probe, does nothing, indicates there's a complete open circuit. So 
we're 100% looking for a broken wire and now it just becomes the game of poke and hope and we're gonna look at some obvious spots coming out of the fuse box where the wires are around hopefully find it we might end up popping up the fuse box although it doesn't look too crusty there's no way to break the system down folks it is a straight run we double checked under the dash the best we could it doesn't look like anything there's been touched so we can see where the harness inside comes up and goes right through the firewall here that all looks completely intact um, but you guys know we've seen wires broke inside of looms. But uh, So the next step I told McCoy, we're going to take the fuse box out. You can keep going, McCoy. Um, we're going to take the fuse box out and have a look there. So I'm going to unhook the battery. Get the battery unhooked because we have to pull the uh, power wire off that fuse box. He's going to take that brace out over there, grab the fuse box, pull it out, and see see what we see. What we can see under there, it doesn't look crusty or anything, but it only takes one little wire. Uh, now we gotta see if the cat is dead or alive. In other words, we're gonna open up Pandora's box here. Uh, sometimes this can be the end of the show for a Chevrolet, uh, opening up these fuse boxes. This one doesn't look super crusty. Put that release tab over there. Pull that one back. Yeah, over there, McCoy. Harnesses should come unplugged on their own, unless they're just complete green corrosion. It can be a little bit of a pisser to get out. Uh, let me show you something here before we get too far, folks. It's like a drug sniffing dog. So if we look down in, I don't know if we, you guys will be able to see it down in there. It's probably not gonna focus. See that little green? Well, it's not focusing, but right about there, you see that green dust down in there? Our fuse is right around here. That green dust looks like it's below it. So I'm gonna fiddle with these connectors, try to get them unplugged so we can flip this thing over and have a closer look. So there's no release tab on these connectors. Ah, there's that one. Lots of green crusties falling out of this thing though. There we go. Let's see. Lots of green on the back side of this connector. So these connectors are supposed to stay down in there. It's a really piss poor setup, but I see lots of green. I'm assuming this connector. Here's red and white. Uh, give me a pocket, pocket screwdriver. Way you one of the orange handled ones. Red and white. Oh, there it is, old son. So we just broke that one off, and and that's good. Give that one a tug, because you remember on the diagram it showed two wires going into one pin. All right, flip this over. Actually, let me uh, let me just finish unplugging this. Okay. There. There's your GM fuse box. You guys should be familiar with these. Uh, pretty failure prone item. However, with all that being said, this is going to need to be repaired now. Um, that pin is completely green. It's all crusted out. So it's this one right here, that pin right there. You can see where it was double crimped in there. Oddly enough, it's the, I mean, this one has a little bit of corrosion, but that one has the most amount of corrosion. And that's where the wire pulled out. So now we gotta make a determination how we're gonna fix it. I went ahead and pulled on the other wire that was in there that feeds the power outlets and naturally that one popped right out. Uh, so we're at the ethical dilemma of what to do because we're making a YouTube video. Uh, ideally, in a perfect world, we would get a new pin, we'd pull the connector apart, and we would repin it. 
that's the only one that's really kind of funky right now. The one next to it has a little bit of corrosion. We're gonna clean that up a little bit. Uh, the other thing we can do, given that these wires are, are both right here, we're gonna open up the harness. We're gonna pull the wires out. We're gonna put a inline fuse on it. We're just gonna attach them to the studs. Uh, we're looking at the rest of this truck and she's crusty, uh, especially up here. She's real crusty. Uh, it's gonna go somewhere else for an inspection and this will be a legit fix. Uh, so that's the one of the two ways that you could do this. Uh, like I say, either obtain a new pin from a used box or uh, you know try to locate it new, depin it, repin it, hook your wires back up, or uh, what we're gonna elect to do, we're gonna open this up, we're gonna pull these wires out a little bit, we're gonna tag onto them, uh, external uh, 20 amp fuse or whatever the fuse is supposed to be, and then uh, just run it to one of the uh, power studs and then we're gonna label it. I think given the, the age and overall condition, that's probably the best and the easiest fix today. Free tip Friday for you on a Thursday. Get your 10 mil socket. Most of you have seen this trick by now. We need a mini roll of tape and all we have is a big roll of tape. Scotch 33 plus. Take your tape, wrap it around your socket. Don't stretch it tight. I showed McCoy this trick. He ran home and told everybody he knows. So now I'm gonna show you. There, get as much as you think you need. Get out the Gerber. And there you go. You now have an official mini roll of tape. So don't tell anybody I told you. So we've got that taped up. We did expose our two wires here. Now they were corroded up near the end, so we're gonna chop them off, make sure we can get down to the good stuff. Looks pretty good to me. Here's some pretty thin wires. Peel that one back. Man, they look like they're about maybe 18 gauge. Yeah, they're probably about 18 gauge. Let's see here. I did get us a, we're gonna use a crimp and seal connector. I'm gonna get these two twisted together. And it looks like your standard butt connector, but it has the uh, heat shrink and adhesive right in it. Let me shorten them up just a tiny bit. There's that, we got a good connection on that. And then what we're gonna use is just your classic 782-2023. Fuse holder, napper, not a sponsor. I keep a few of these around for little projects like this. But that's all it is, this here. <clears throat> we're gonna open her up. 20 amp fuse, slide that little guy in. Let me strip that back just a tiny bit more on this side. A little too much, I'm gonna strip it very, I left a little bit too much of a pigtail on there. I made it a little longer and I just cut it back to about where it was. <laughs> Go figure. Slide that down in there. that little guy a crimp make sure it's good let me go get a lighter so we can burn that down hopefully you guys kind of see what's going on got our little butane torch here we're just going to heat that up until it shrinks down on there like i say these, these ones are pretty good they've got adhesive and stuff in them it kind of oozes right out the ends Makes a nice tight seal, got a mechanical crimp. All right, I'm gonna let that cool down. And we might not even have to add any kind of wire extension on there. I did bring us a couple eyelets. Uh, McCoy's trying to clean the corrosion off the end of that fuse box where we're gonna wire this one in. And then we'll just put your classic green tape label on this baby. make sure we're not pinching our wire here because we do we did run it up front uh, that gets a little bit tight I want to run it out the front because I don't want to inhibit the lid from coming on it my idea is to have this here 
you know, and have it under the fuse box where it's easily accessible. I'm gonna put a little tiny notch in the plastic. I think would be our best bet. Stick this to the side. Yeah, I'm gonna put just a little notch down in this plastic, just where the wire runs out. Like I say, that way when we put the lid on it, we don't have this running around the outside or somebody snagging it when they're taking the lid on and off. So a quick notch, just a tiny notch right there and a tiny notch right there. This is a locator uh, tab here and there. It's got four little locators, those T-shaped pieces. Uh, but we just put a little tiny notch in the plastic next to it. Uh, just stick a drill on its side and the drill and just touch it. The plastic disappears pretty quick and then this will come out. The fuse will be accessible. Koi's gonna grab us a 13 millimeter wrench. We're gonna stick our eyelid on there. We'll just stick a flat washer on top of it. We grab some uh, fluid film also, McCoy. We're gonna stick a, this is just an eight, one, two, five. So eight millimeter by one, two, five. Standard nut. The side over here is six millimeters. Just two different studs. He doesn't have any of his trailer brake connectors or anything wired up. The keep alive power for your trailer usually goes here. These studs are usually fed from a, another 40 or 60 amp fuse, which we have to make sure that we have in the box, but we'll find out here shortly if the fuse is already installed. There's that. Make sure this is down out of our way. Our, our wire is still loose in the notch, so nothing to worry about there. We're gonna get the battery hooked back up. I'm gonna label this, and then we're gonna uh, see if we have power on the inside now. Hooking that back up. Oh, would you look at that? She's all lit up. We now have power and ground. Of course, we weren't missing ground, but we can see we have power. We have both our grounds. 12.1 the battery. And if we turn the key on, 6 and 14 should start blinking there. Let's see. Stand by. Let me try to get the key in. Yep. 6 and 14 are blinking, so we got data communications now. Fantastic easy fix and that's going to wrap this one up folks i put a label on it, it says fuse 53 and that'll stay right under here kind of bend that down a little bit i'll be able to put the lid on it probably should have put it on before mccoy put the thing in the back here but we'll get her there we go she's finally on there these uh edges of these boxes get warped makes putting those on and hitting the latch is kind of a pisser but uh, we got it that's it show's over all right folks that's it uh mccoy took that one out parked it we'll call a customer to come get that one and bring in the next one see what kind of lights are on in that chevrolet again as i mentioned there's a couple ways to fix that there was the you know get the pin repin the connector which isn't a huge deal uh the connect those connectors come apart relatively easy the pins are big they're not super fiddly uh, but it's just a matter of kind of seeing if the juice is worth the squeeze, uh, as they say. And in this case, I think we did a proper repair. Uh, 2014 in New York probably doesn't have long left for this world. Uh, so that seems to be the best fix. If there was a bunch of pins there screwed up, yeah, we would have went and probably cut a connector uh, down to Wilbert Shoe Pole in a bass, who doesn't sponsor us, and we would have fixed all of those. But I mean, it was just that one, you know, easy peasy. So. All right, we're gonna bring in the next Jimmy. You guys go in the comments section. Questions, comments, concerns, the NC, the Facebook. Just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.